Greetings stargazers and welcome to section 19 where we're going to discuss the size and age of the universe. So we're getting into some absolutely fun topics and we're going to break them down. We're going to focus on parallax. This is going to be our primary tool for starting up and measuring the distances in the universe. And then from there, we're going to start talking about this idea of this distance ladder. We're going to have these different techniques stacked on top of each other to try and get an idea of just how large the entire universe is. And at the very end, we're going to talk about a time scale. What is the chronology of the universe itself? So as usual, we'll start off a simple reading quiz. And we'll ask, hey, in today, modern ages, right? Astronomers, we can directly measure distances to, say, the planets, right? Or to the moons of Jupiter's. And how do we do that nowadays? It used to be that we'd have to do all these sort of clever tricks. Remember how Copernicus could figure out distances measuring angles and get his inferior, superior planets. And uh, there was always just measurements based off of other measurements. Well... No, we can do it directly. And with enough rambling out of my way, we do it by just bouncing radar. We just shoot a high focus radar beam at those objects and measure the time for that radar, radio waves to hit the planet, hit the satellite, and come back to us. And there is a highly accurate distance measurement. We'll discuss more of that in part two of this video, but for now, Let's get into our detailed discussion on parallax. What is it? How are we going to use that to measure the size of the universe? Let me start you off by discussing what's called stereoscopic vision, right? I assume most of you have two functional eyes, right? And because of that, you're going to have depth perception. And what I've set up here is a little bar here for you to demonstrate yourself. All right, get yourself a pencil and put a little bit of distance between you and the screen and you're gonna hold the pencil up and you're gonna look at the pencil projected onto the bars, all right? And you can do the same thing with your finger here. Now, pencil's lined up, try and put it at the center of the bars and close an eye and switch and count the number of bars that the pencil jumps. Now go very far away, all right? Increase the distance. Did the number go up or down? Now bring the pencil very close to your face. And it's a huge jump. So what your eyes are doing, well, what your brain's doing is saying, look, my one eye is tracking it here, another ice tracking over there, and your brain inherently knows this distance, the distance between your eyes. And with the angular projections, it says, all right, give me depth, how far away that object is. You ever seen setups like this, triangulation? What you're doing is you're setting up a known baseline measurement. You know how far apart these are, and then you're getting angle measurements and with those you can calculate the distance to the object and this exact principle is going to be what we're going to exploit to measure the distance to the stars we'll do that we're going to need some time gaps uh, earth doesn't have two eyes so instead we're going to use earth's orbit which means we got to wait months Thanks. Right. I hope this question illustrates what we're talking about. Here, here is a view of the night sky six months ago. And you see a couple of stars out here. And we're going to focus on the red and blue one that I highlighted, stars A and B. Well, wait six months. In about six months, you'll notice that these stars will have shifted. And these pictures are over-exaggerated. But the principle still stands. The angular position of these stars will have moved. And this last picture is both pictures, both uh, six months ago and now, just layered on top of each other. And you'll say, all right, how much have these things displaced in the six months? And this is enough information to tell us if one of those stars is closer to us. 
and we'd be able to directly conclude that this star, sure, picture-wise, it seems smaller, and that was done on purpose. We can't exactly have a size of the stars by this angular measurement. We have to use other tricks. One could appear smaller, but still be closer. Just means that this star is much, much bigger. But either way, it's the jump. It's how much of a jump it does that determines which star is closer to Earth. So, instead of having two eyeballs separated by a known distance to get our depth perception, what we're going to use is Earth's orbit. Right? Here's one eyeball. Here's the other eyeball. And we'll use this distance, right, using that known distance, to calculate our depth perception, or our new definition, parallax. So parallax just means, look, here's, here are the stars. Here's where they actually are. But this is how we see them, right? We're going to see the distant background stars. And the red, blue, they're going to be closer to us, but we project them onto the background stars. Think of the background stars as being like the wall in the background, right? There's a big wall up there. That's not going to move a lot because it's far away from me. Same thing for the background stars. They're very, very far away, so their angular displacements are effectively zero. And we are projecting the red and blue onto them. So here's our image, how we view these, view these guys, let's say six months ago, and then go to now. Right? Earth has rotated. We've ridden along our orbit around our sun. And now we're projecting new positions. We're projecting out to where they are now. And this is going to be our buildup to our parallax measurement. Right? Here's everything superimposed on top of each other. Whole shebang. Right. So look at them at six month intervals apart from each other. And we know the distance. It's an astronomical unit. Well, technically, the distance from here to here will be two astronomical units. But the point is that we know how far this distance is. We've spent literally centuries trying to figure out how far away Earth is from the sun. So if we know this distance accurately, and we can figure the corresponding projected angles here, we'll get the distance to the stars. All right, let's try another question on size, all right? Let's say star A is 10 light years away, and star B is 50 light years away. And now we're gonna define Vs, the parallactic angles. We'll have our parallactic angles, all right? So, angle B, how does that compare to A? Well, hopefully you can clearly see in the picture that angle B is going to be significantly smaller than A. Right? So, conclusion, conclusion. The further away it is, the further away the star is, the smaller the angle gets. Remember, we've discussed things like angular size. The closer your face, huge angular size, far away, smaller and smaller. Same principle. Yeah. Once well, you know it, we've set up a good old right triangle, our favorite utility in the world. So, some quantities I'm going to define. I'm going to call lowercase p the parallactic angle. And we're going to measure that in arc seconds. So that's this angle, the angle formed in this right triangle. That's our parallactic angle, or parallax angle. And then we're going to say the distance to the star. How far away the star is, we're going to define that in a unit called the parsec. All right. Now, both these units deserve a little more detail and attention, because you've heard reference, references to these units all the time for this course. And maybe you've heard me describe, define them formally, but let's let's go over that in detail. What the heck is an arc second, and what the heck is a parsec? So, an arc second, one arc second, 
arc seconds are angular measurements. Right? They measure, you can think of it in terms of degrees, how much you have rotated around. But an arc second is equal to 1 3,600th of a single degree. So let's try and get a picture of your head how tiny this is. Here I've got myself a little circle and we've set up 360 degrees or 2 pi radians. Same thing. Once around is 360 degrees or 2 pi rads. Well, how big is 1 radian? Shrink down. Zoom in. Here is 1 radian. This angle here. And 1 radian rounding is 57.3 degrees. So we got to get smaller now. So instead of looking at 1 radian, let's look at 1 degree. There's one degree on this plot. All right, not very visible. So we're going to zoom in again. There we go. Here is one degree. One more step. I'm going to put it in this little blue line. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of you can't see this. Download the, the presentation file, zoom in. There is a blue line there. The angle of that blue line is a thousand times too great. That is a thousand times larger than one arc second. So that is the size of angular displacements that we're going to be dealing with. Arc seconds. A thousandth of that blue line you see on your screen right now. Astronomers have gotten so good actually that uh, with satellites, we've gotten down to the micro arc second angular displacements that they can detect. Absolutely mind boggling displacements that they can do. So, arc seconds, hopefully, you have a clear picture in your head. Let's talk about the parsec. Right? So, I really need to emphasize a parsec is a distance measurement. All you Star Wars fans out there, I know you're all jumping in joy referencing this, but I'm just going to focus now. A parsec is a distance measurement. It measures how far away something is. And astronomers have defined a parsec as a distance of which an object has an angle, a parallactic angle of one arc second. So one arc second parallax, one parsec. That's the definition. So like I claimed, this is a distance unit. So if I say the distance is one parsec, what is this in other units? Well, our SI units, I could say it's 3.1 times 10 to the 16th meters. All right, big numbers on my brain here. What about astronomical units? Well, it's 206,000 astronomical units. All right, so take distance from Earth to our sun and do that 206,000 times. That's that's helping, that's, that's on my brain. Or another one, we have to get into the big scale universe. We can say that one parsec is about 3.26 light years. So an object that's about 3.26 light years away, that is one parsec, which corresponds to a parallax angle of one arc second. So very important, we need to keep our units straight. We're gonna see some equations that we're gonna uh, relate. The displacement, the distance, and the arc seconds angles, the parallax angle. And we want to be careful with our units to keep things straight. Let's come back to this picture. It's a right triangle. We can just set up a trigonometric relationship. Here's an angle, distance we know, distance we're going to measure, so we can just say tangent. So ka toa, if you need to uh, remember those, toa says tangent is the opposite adjacent. So tangent of the angle, the parallactic angle, is one astronomical unit, unit distance divided by the distance to the star. Now, as you might recall from the arc second conversation, an arc second is an incredibly tiny value. So what astronomers do is use what's called a small angle approximation, where they place tangent of the angle with just the number of the angle itself to an entire lecture on why this is valid, but I'll just show you one numerical calculation. If I calculate an angle in the units of radians, tangent of 0 0.05 radians, do this in calculator. You'll get something close to 0.05 with 
a little extra heavier. So it's not a bad approximation. If we're dealing with fractions of fractions of a degree, a tiny angle approximation works pretty well. And so astronomers just take a shortcut and we say, look, the parallax angle P is equal to one over the distance. So let's use that to do a sample calculation, all right? Let's say I give you a star, you do your measurements and you find that that star has a parallax angle of 0 0.25 arc seconds. That's what the prime prime means, arc seconds. So it is 0.25 arc second angle. How far away is it? So there's a lot of resources that just don't worry about the units. They just say, plug these numbers in and make it work out. I'm a units person. I want to focus on that. So I think it's important to keep track of what's happening here. So by definition, one parsec is one over one arc second. That is a definition. So I can manipulate this and just say, look, the product, one parsec times one arc, or sorry, one parsec times one arc second is equal to just one. And I'm going to use this to make my units work out. You might find other ways of doing these calculations, neglecting the units, and good on you. If, if you're comfortable with that, that's totally fine. Like I said, my brain's a units person. I need to keep the units there to keep things straight. So let's calculate the distance, all right? Distance is one over the parallactic angle. Let's start plugging in. All right, we have a parallax of 0.25 arc seconds. I want the units to work out correctly. So I'm gonna multiply this by one. And one just happens to equal this quantity by definition. Well, now I can cancel out the units of arc seconds, just get rid of them, cancel the arc seconds out, and I have the distance is one over 0.25 parsecs. Well, one divided by 0.25 is four parsecs. And this agrees with what we saw before, right? The smaller the parallactic angle, the larger the distance to the star is.